welcome back to the channel built by Ben. Uh, today, we're gonna to be tackling this little bit of boxing in down here. At the customer's house, they've got this little bit of pipe in their little office area. This dodgy little corner here. For some reason, the previous house owner decided to clad the door lining in stainless steel. So, we won't be touching that, we won't be going anywhere near that. But the object of today is just to get a nice little bit of MDF moisture resistant round there. Build the boxing in. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. The first thing we're going to do is just get a bit of batten just along the floor here. Roughly wants to stop where the edge of the wall is there. So we'll make a mark. And then the measurement for that is 1100. I'll just go and cut a bit of that and come back and we'll fix that for the floor. Right, so it's very difficult at this stage because you can see the wall so damaged down here. You're never going to get it square to the wall by measuring away from the bottom of the wall like that because you'll get 10 different measurements from all these different points. So up here, I think it looks like about the straightest part of the wall. Um, so to hide all of this damage, we're going to take the boxing up to this level and wrap it around the corner here to hide all of this as well. Um, so what we want to be doing is setting this laser up. You can see here that we can get that to shine on the tape there. It's 120, it's 110 up that end. So we know we just need to adjust that laser until we're about right. So we've got 100, 110. So if we move this one to 110 as well. So we're 110 away from this point and this point. So now what we need to do is just get that batten there to line up with that laser line as well. And then we'll get this screwed and fixed into the floor. Now you can see here that we've just got a little bit of a gap underneath here. So I'm just gonna get a nice thin bit of this flooring as well just to support the back edge of that button. So I've just cut three strips of this flooring and it's literally not really doing a lot apart from just taking that back edge of that button to stop it flipping inwards. I'm not really happy with that touching that pipe in case it draws the water out of it so I'll just trim that one down. Yeah. So at this point, when you're just putting your first bit of wood in, if you can't get it to stay exactly still, exactly where you want it, I wouldn't really worry too much at this stage because when we start putting the other elements of this in, it all strengthens itself up. It's the good thing about using 18 mil MDF. It's so strong and you can fix the MDF into each other um, to strengthen it a lot more than it would be normally. So um, another thing you can do, which I'm gonna do now, is just to run a bit of uh, adhesive under this first baton as well. Um, and a good point to mention now is that there's a lever on here that needs to be accessed in the future. So. You've got to be thinking of these things. Try not to ever box in things that uh, you might need access to in the future. You might know it's there, but whoever buys the house off you in the future might not. So just make sure there's a nice little access hatch in front of anything that you may need access to. I know that the customer also wants a water softener fitted to this as well at some point. So we're actually going to make the boxing in today um, removable um, and then we'll seal it up and make it permanent on a later date. So the adhesive I use a lot is the Stixol Extreme Power one. Never had an issue with this. Um, the clear or the white ones seem to be the best. So as I said, probably get a little bit under these pieces as well, just to lock it all in. <laughs> had an absolute mess there. Oh, it's because it's dried up in the tube. But we'll change the tube and we'll try that again. Right, 
That one's already done. Just quickly check our measurements again because we've been in and out a few times. Sometimes you can tread on the floor and it'll move your laser for you. So always just keep referring back to that, making sure you haven't moved it. And then we'll just push that down nice and carefully. And then we'll grab some screws to get that locked in now. So what we probably want to be aiming for is just to grab that floor and I know that there's a concrete subfloor under here, the screed, so we don't want to be going into that. So you just want the thickness of your batten, which is 25 mil and then about 10 to 15 mil pull. So we want about 35, 40 mil screw. Important to get that bang on at this point. So just keep going until you get it right. You can pre-drill these if you want. These screws that I use are really good. They just bite through. If you were fixing Maybe a bit of hardwood or something to the floor. You definitely need to be drilling through first, but roofing batten usually takes a bit of a bit of a hammering before it starts splitting. So absolutely fine to use that. So the next thing we want to be doing is just selecting a height for the top of this to go. I told the customer that we'd just try and get rid of all of this horrible bit of wall here. Uh, there's a nice big dip in here that you might not be able to see on the camera. He's attempted to put some filler in there, but the actual expanse of that dip is about this big. So I said we'd just cover it up with the MDF. It gets rid of all of this as well. There's some small bits of damage here as well, where an old bit of boxing in has come away from the wall by the looks of it. So we'll just go above all of that so we know at the bottom of our batten, uh, sorry, the top of our batten needs to hit them two lines. So we'll just run this 7mm masonry bit through here. Just a touch. And we'll just mark them out. And then you can release the batten, stick this on hammer and do the grunt of the drilling. Okay, so we'll just go in with a couple of brown plugs. Brown plugs fit nice into a seven mil hole. Gotta find my hammer. Where's that? Right, so I've selected a 5mm by 70mm screw for this. 25mm through there, so you've got by the time it pulls in about 50mm into the plug, so should work out about right. I'm just going to go in lightly for now because we've still got to drill that middle hole. I'm just 
just going to put a tiny bit of pressure down on there. In fact, we'll check it with the laser. So we just need to come up a tiny bit with that. That's the joy of putting them in on screws. You can just make them tiny adjustments by knocking them up before you fully tighten them. So you can see the laser's hitting the top of that all the way along now. I'm actually not even gonna bother putting pressure on the middle because the batten looks really straight. Now to save taking that off again, what you can do, because we've gone through with a seven mil drill bit, although the wood tightens up a bit, get it into that stage and then just use the screw to punch it all the way through. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that can take a bit of a thump because this little lug on the end of the plug here just gets stuck in the wood. So again, because we give that a bit of a bosh with the hammer, we'll just check that laser's running through nicely. I can see we've just bolted that end down a bit. So there, nice and level, ready to be tightened up. Now we'll get to measuring some MDF. Um, now the way I'm gonna do this is actually, uh, some people like to use a lot of batten here and they would actually build almost like a mini stud wall. Um, but I like to use the MDF as the structure. It's strong enough. Um, so all we'll do is we'll just measure this MDF up to this point. So then the MDF that comes up front here will actually work as the strength for the top bit to sit on. And once that's screwed together, it can't go anywhere. There's nowhere that it can actually go. Um, it can't fall forwards because this part will be holding that from coming forwards. It can't collapse backwards because the, the top bit here will be screwed into the front. So it will just become strong by itself once it's all together. Um, if you're struggling to take this measurement here, obviously because you're at a bit of an angle, um, you can just check it over with your laser once again. So all we've got to do there, get the laser nice and level, and then use your tape measure. And you can see there, we're about 616, something like that, if you can see that on the camera. It's a good way of just checking. And over here we're 620. So we're only four mil out. which means it's probably the floor just flicking up because it's a floating floor. So we'll cut that at about 650 and then we'll scribe it to the floor. First thing we want to be doing is getting that laser again. We just want to be marking where the bottom of that is, but a tiny bit in front of where the MDF sits. So just a tiny mark there. And then once the MDF's in this position, we can then see where the laser needs to sit. So we know we're a little bit out of level because we know that the floor runs down. So that's where we need to get it to, but at the moment, we just need to bring that top level. So you can see we've got to pick the left-hand side of that up a bit to bring it level with the right hand side. So we'll just go for a grey spacer. It's really important at this point that we get everything bang on level to that laser. You can see there that that laser is just touching the top of that all the way across, really happy with that. So what that then allows us to do is to find that original mark which is the top of our batten behind it. 
So we know that this much here from the top of the MDF to that laser is how much we've got to take off of the bottom. So in order to do that, we'll get the compass ready. It's a bit hard to do one handed this, but trying to get the right angles for the camera as well, but I could just see there that I've managed to mark that where that laser hits. And all we've got to do now is to set this. We'll get the point of that on there and the pencil there. And we know that that's then going to take that much off of the bottom to the shape of the floor. So we'll just start up this end run that across there Nice it snug down to the floor once we cut that so that's the height cut we can get rid of that grey spacer now just check you're still recording yep so we've got rid of that grey spacer and now I'm fully expecting that to be level with the top of that baton. It feels pretty good, but we'll just run that laser across the top there again. So I can see there that we're just touching the top of the MDF and we're just touching the top of the baton there. There. Perfect. So now that we've got the height cut, we know that we can now scribe it to this wall. Um, that's just a tiny bit bigger than that pencil, so great use for a carpenter's pencil. In fact, because we've got the compass out, we'll just use that. But a carpenter's pen or you, pencil, you can just turn either way to get two different thicknesses for a scribe. But we'll go with this for now, because I'd rather take a bit more meat off. Go outside and get that cut. Right, so we now drop that back into place. I'll just show you how that fits. You can see there that it's nice and tight to the floor. Same again up the wall there. And we're level with the top. So now that that piece is in place, it's just gonna, because it's tied to the wall there, it should just stay there by itself. And then what we can do is we can get an idea of how wide this bit's gotta be. So we can go into there. In fact, what we'll do is we'll run the laser up this edge so that we can tell if that needs to go forwards or backwards a bit. And then we'll drop the tape behind the MDF whilst checking the laser. And I can see that we want that 315. Now, because we're going into here, we don't have to be exact with that. So I'm actually gonna drop that down to 312 and give it three mil wiggle room because it might be a touch different down the bottom. So we'll cut that at 312 by the same height, which is 617. In fact, we'll probably oversize that for now and cut that down just like we did this front one. And then we know that the top's gonna be bang on level. All right, so we've left the height long all we're going to do is just plop that in there. Until it's roughly where we want it. I can see that, again, 
we've just got a little bit of curl on the floor there. So we'll run the laser up here. We know that that's looking quite good there. So we'll just bring the front of that over. Wait until that laser's hitting everything. And then we'll just scribe the bottom of this. Just to match that floor again. Yeah, and that should let that just set level. It looks like we just need to bring that out a touch, but I'm not too worried about that. As I say, we can hide most of this. So what we're going to be doing now is just grabbing that little measurement there so that we can cut that nice and flat with the top. Yeah, it looks nice and straight there. So what's important here is that we get our pencil nice and sharp on the tip. And then we can just run that up that back edge. And then we've got a line on here just to cut the width of this down. So you can see it all starting to come together now. We can just tap that level. And then what I'm gonna do here is use these Spax MDF screws. Let's shut that and get them wind chimes out. We're going to use these Spax MDF screws. If I can open them. And these are great little screws. Quite thin little things. Um, but they're great for MDF because they don't split it at all. So that's the base of the box made. You can see already without the top on, it's getting a lot stronger already. So we're just gonna pile it through the bottom here now, just ready to take the 50 mil screws that will be removable. And as you can see now, we've got our nice structure and now we've just got to cut this top piece on. So to start, we're just going to measure that. And we'll cut it over again. So we'll go to 1200. And we actually want this measurement. So we want it over here as well. So we want 1200 by 350, which gives it about 10 mil overlap. We'll go and get that cut now. Okay, so we've got this top piece cut. The wind's kicking up out there. So massively big at the moment, I know, because obviously this part here has got to reach all the way back here. So we're going to be cutting a nice chunk of this out. We know that this point here has got to reach all the way in here. So if we set that from point to point, tighten her up, And we can just run that, making sure that you keep it nice and steady right along that wall. Yeah. So we're definitely within the region we want to be now. 
this overhang's looking tidy here. So all I'm going to do there is just measure what the overhang is, which is 15 mil. And then mark this line on the side, underneath that top. And then we'll go 15 mil that way, give us the same overhang as this has got. We'll go and get that cut and then we'll see about getting it full node. Okay, so as you can see, we've got to be a bit careful now. It's quite a thin bit on the edge there. So we decided just to come level with the side of the box there. The customer didn't want the ball nose coming into the architrave. So I tried it first, bringing it into the architrave and it just didn't look right. So I've decided just to come to the side of the box there. And we'll just sand that in nice and flush and just put the ball nose on the front edge here. Should finish that off really neatly. Right, so we're back indoors now. Let's try this in for size. Now, that's really good. Tiny bit of a gap here, but we can just cork that up. And there's our finished job for now. Again, like I said, this is being removed in a few weeks time for a water softener but all we do from this point is just go through the top here into that bottom piece of MDF 
And then we go through the top of the back here just to tie it into that batten that we fixed earlier. But as you can see, it's a nice, neat job. And then we'll sand that all down and seal it, ready for it to be painted. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is just fit this little access hatch. Uh, just because we've got a, a uh, water main or a gas main behind there. Not sure which one actually from here. So we'll just dye that up. We'll just mark that on there. We'll just check we got that straight. I'm measuring down. Ah. Oh, we've got it bang on. And we're just going to use, I've still got the multi tool here with the Vaunt blade in that ITS gave to me. Um, brilliant multi tool blade, I'm still using the thing, so we'll just cut this hole out and get the hatch fitted. Just try that out, make sure it fits, it's a good snug fit. We'll just run a little bit of adhesive behind that rebate there and push that all back. Let's get that hoovered up and then for now, that's a done job. So that's the end of this week's episode. Thanks for joining me. If you're new to the channel, then please click subscribe and click the bell as well so that you'll get notifications of when I put a new video up. Um, and comment and like on the video, please, because uh, you have no idea how much that helps the algorithm. Um, chuck it out to lots of new viewers. So thanks for the support again. Hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you next week.